The hardest thing a small YouTuber can feel is when you wake up in the morning and nothing has changed on your channel. No new views, no new subscribers, or maybe you did get a small amount of views and subscribers, but it's nowhere near as much as you'd like. Well, the good news is there's a solution. For example, this is a channel that went on to get over 50,000 subscribers and 20 million views. But when I first started working on it, the subscriber growth was flat as my ex-girlfriend's chest. I'm, I'm pancakes, I meant pancakes. But then I figured out some stuff I'm gonna share with you in this video and went from getting about 15 subscribers per month to over 1,500 subscribers per month in a little over six weeks. So let me show you how I did it with this gaming channel by doing the exact opposite of what most people think is the key to success. And this is a particularly good example because in the beginning, this channel was properly dead. I'm talking, I was lucky to crack 10 views on new videos I posted. I remember as my one year YouTube anniversary rolled around, things looked incredibly bleak. All in all, at this stage, I'd created around 65 different videos. Those videos had averaged between 10 and 40 views and I'd gained a total of about 150 pretty inactive subscribers. But then the channel blew up and I'm gonna show you how. See, we're in a culture where giving up is frowned upon. And so you might think never giving up is a good thing, but here's what I learned. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is usually a sign of insanity. In other words, if you've been grinding for the last few months and posted say 10 videos that flop, your 11th video is probably gonna to flop too if you don't do something drastically different. If something's clearly not working, don't do it hard. Harder, which is actually what my ex-girlfriend used to tell me, you know, when we were making pancakes. So that's the first thing I wanna point out. In the story I just shared, yes, I grinded for over a year and created 65 different videos with very little results. But in that period, that channel tested out 15 different video styles and 11 different games. I started with Minecraft tutorials and ended with Star Wars Battlefront funny moments videos. You need to give up, quit your current way of doing things and test doing different things if you want different results. And that's why I wanna give you what I think are the top things you should focus focus on testing that will have the biggest impact on helping your channel grow overnight. Firstly, your video content. The YouTube algorithm's job is to keep people on the platform for as long as possible because when it does that, viewers are more likely to encounter more ads and that makes YouTube more money. So some things to test when it comes to video content can be things like your hook, your structure, your pacing, duration, pattern interrupts, storytelling. There are so many different things we could dive into. But I wanna give you one simple actionable tip and that is sometimes the first step can be just looking at your audience retention graphs of your videos. So if you go to your YouTube studio, you go to content, you pick one of your videos and click on analytics, then you come down to the bottom here and what you'll usually see after a couple of days of the video being live is a retention graph like this. And the simplest, easiest thing to look for is where the graph goes down the steepest and then figure out what happened in the video at that point. So for example, on this video, you might see that there's a pretty decent decline here until we we hit this section and it starts to flatten out and less people leave. Now it's normal for a much higher percentage of people to click off your video right at the beginning than they do throughout the video, for example. But what I might wanna do for this video is come back to this section and try to figure out what happened here that caused people to stop leaving the video at such a high rate and commit to actually watching it for a longer period of time. Another thing that stands out to me here is this little peak and drop off. I might wanna try and figure out what was happening during this decline line here and see if I can find ways to rework my content and maybe make it similar to say what was happening up here at this point of the video where you can see the graphs are relatively flat which means not many people are clicking off the video. Now your analytics can be really helpful but if you're only getting a very small amount of views already then the data and analytics you see here becomes more and more unreliable because let's say for example you have five viewers and one single viewer clicks off your video you're going to see a 20% decline in your audience retention even though it was just one person and it's totally possible that that person's phone just happened to die at that particular point and had nothing to do with your video. And so ideally, the more views on a video, the more statistically significant and accurate your audience retention graphs are going to be. So how do you actually get more views? Well, it can start with getting people to actually click on your videos. And that leads us to the next thing that I would highly recommend you spend a lot of time testing, which is video ideas. Your video idea is the concept behind your entire video itself. Like what is actually going to happen in your video or what are you going to teach people by the end of this video and something I've found that can be really beneficial to work on is testing more objectively interesting ideas. What do I mean by that? Well let's say we've got two videos. Video A which is a video where you compete in a Minecraft build battle and try to win or we've got video B a video where you get a hundred players
players and host a giant Minecraft build battle and whoever builds the coolest thing, you'll buy it for them in real life. Now you, my dear viewer, haven't seen the title for either of these videos, you haven't seen the thumbnail for either of these videos, you don't know who the creator of these videos actually is. But as a video idea, objectively, which one sounds the most interesting to you? Now leave a comment below, but I'm willing to bet that video B would have piqued your curiosity above video A, because the idea itself is just better. Now this is obviously an extreme example, but you get the idea. If the idea or concept behind your video itself isn't really that interesting, then usually your video will struggle to get views even if you have a really good title and thumbnail. And that's why the next thing you should really work on is optimizing your click-through rate by creating really great titles and thumbnails. For example, going back to our previous video idea where we host a giant Minecraft build battle of 100 players and whoever builds the coolest thing we buy it for them in real life, we could create a title and thumbnail for it that looks like this, or there could be a title and thumbnail for it that looks like this. Out of these two title and thumbnail combos, which one would you be more likely to click on? Probably this one. It concisely explains the idea of the video, and it even shows an example of a Rolex to really illustrate exactly how this video could play out. This video, on the other hand, the title is super long, thumbnail doesn't really tease much visually, and it's not a very good promotion for what could have been a really great video idea. Now, if you can nail your video content, video ideas, and title and thumbnails, you'll be ahead of most people out there. But for some people, all of this will be completely useless if you don't do the next thing I'm gonna talk about. So if we're to take a 30,000 foot view of how to succeed on YouTube, one lens to look through is the lens of supply and demand. To be successful, you need to be creating the types of videos where there's not so much competition that you're going to get eaten alive, but there also needs to be a large amount of viewers who actually wanna watch those types of videos. For example, let's take Minecraft Let's Plays. There are a ton of viewers out there who enjoy watching Minecraft Let's Play videos. And there's a ton of data to back that up. In other words, the demand for Minecraft Let's Play videos is pretty high. So a lot of small YouTubers make the mistake of trying to become Minecraft Let's Players without realizing that there's a huge amount of competition, aka supply, that's gonna make their success almost impossible. As a small YouTuber, you're probably not even gonna have the opportunity to be discovered in the first place. And even if somehow you are, there are a huge number of highly experienced, highly talented and successful creators who are constantly going to be vying for that attention and stealing your audience away. And to give a real quick example, if I just type Minecraft Let's Plays into YouTube, look how far I have to scroll down to find the first creator who pops up with less than a thousand subscribers. We're still going. It's down here. You know how many people type Minecraft Let's Play into YouTube and scroll down this far before deciding to click on a video? This many people. And so this niche is a bad one because there's so much supply. And so what you wanna do is look for a niche where there aren't already a huge amount of established large YouTubers consistently supplying content, yet there are still a bunch of viewers who really wanna religiously watch that type of content. And so if I was struggling to grow overnight, these would be the four things I would most focus my time and energy into testing. Now, if you'd like more in-depth help on how to find a good niche, how to come up with viral video ideas, how to design highly clickable tiles and thumbnail combos, and how to edit videos that keep your audience watching all the way to the end, along with a lot more, you might like my program, The 4-Digit 90 Challenge. It's a step-by-step -step system for reaching your first or next 1,000 subscribers in 90 days, guaranteed. But don't just take my word for it, here's what a few of my students have had to say. Before the course, I had about 80 subscribers. Now I have what over 1,500 subscribers on my channel. Since completing this course, I've gained over 1,000 subs in just the last two months. I have 1,331 subscribers at the time of recording. We're only halfway through the course. I'm doing fantastic. Yeah, I, I just passed, I think, the 350,000 view mark or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, wow, I remember struggling for 350 views. Currently, my channel is sitting at around 18,000 subscribers. Thank you so much to Marcus in helping me with that. I highly recommend it to anybody who's taken YouTube serious and wants to avoid a year's worth of mistakes. If you are looking to start a gaming channel and you're serious about it, make sure you buy this course because you won't regret it. Almost every day I see messages in our private Discord community of people transforming their channels by taking the four digit 90 challenge. And I'd love for you to do the same. So if this sounds like something you might be interested in, click the link down below this video and you can join the challenge today. But if you're wondering, is it really worth it? Like what happens if you sign up and you don't reach a thousand subscribers? 
Well, I stand behind my product. So if you sign up, you follow and actually implement everything that I tell you to implement. Uh, but for some reason, you don't have a thousand subscribers within 90 days of participating, I'll refund your entire investment. So if that sounds fair, click the link down below this video and sign up for the challenge. I hope to see you in the four digit challenge very soon.